we are going to learn a couple new things today and this has to do with photo restoration and you are currently looking at a picture of a ballerina it is a very old picture um, it was scanned into a computer it wasn't even scanned vertically it was just scanned as you see it you can see that the picture is torn you can see it has scratches in it um, and so we're going to need to do some work to this photo. I would like to show you where this, this photo can eventually go to. Um, I'm going to take you as far as this today, okay, in, in this video. If you choose to go all the way, uh, your photo could look something like this. You could um, add a background to it. You could add a name. I, ch I changed her name to Gina the Ballerina. I think initially her name was Ina the Ballerina. But um, you can, you know, go at least to this, at least to this level. And um, if you choose to go all the way, you could take it as far as this. Uh, but the goal of this assignment is to teach you how to create lots of uh, restorations to photos which is a big thing for Photoshop. So we're gonna start out with the original photo. And before I get started, I'm going to save this as, cause you're gonna get this photo as well. So I'm going to save it. Um, I'm going to name her Gina instead of Ina. Gina, the ballerina. And I will put Mrs. C in front of it so that, um, in case, you know, uh, there are more than one with the same name, as long as my name is there, you know, it's mine. So, she is now uh, Mrs. C, Gina the Ballerina, and because I no longer need the original, um, that, that one is now gone. So I still have my final version, and I have sort of my midway version, and of course, you can see when it comes to coloring and things like that, you have complete control over the colors you choose to use when we get to that part of this. All right, so the very first thing we need to do is we need to rotate this picture. So I'm going to go to image. I'm going to go to image rotation. And I'm simply going to put in 90 degrees counterclockwise, okay? Now she is facing in the correct direction. And like I said, you can see that this was scanned onto a computer. So it's a little bit crooked. It's not the way we need it to be. So uh, the next thing that I want to do is I want to crop. So I'm going to click my crop key, okay, my crop tool right over here. And um, I want to kind of take a look at how I want to do this. I would like this to be eight and a half by 11, 300 PPI. So I'm going to click on that so that she will be the right size. Now, if you ever make a mistake and you realize that you put in the wrong uh, height and the, and the wrong width, you can just click this and it will change for you. But I, I put it in correctly, so this is how I want it to look. Now one thing you notice is that this photo is crooked and I want to straighten it. So I'm going to go to this tool right here, okay? And this tool gives me a little crosshair. And if I take this crosshair and I allow the crosshair to follow the direction that the photo should have been. So if this photo had put in had been put into the scanner correctly, it would have looked like this. And when I do that, it flips it so that now that is considered horizontal. Now that that's considered horizontal, I can crop it. I can crop the bottom. Okay. And that should do it. So I'll click my check mark. Okay. So the photo is now properly placed and sized. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to deal with the muddiness of this photo. It's very dirty looking. Um, 
it's an old photograph. So I want to try to uh, fix that up a little bit. Um, so the first thing I will do is I'll go to image again. We'll work directly with the image. This time I'm going to go to adjustments. And you know we've done a lot of adjustments before. We've talked about brightness contrast, we've talked about levels, we've talked about curves, exposure, etc. We are going to use levels, okay? So when you go to levels, you get a little menu that looks like this. And what's interesting about this is you can see how dark this photo is. Like this is where extreme darks should be this is where highlights should be. And yet all of the tone in this is right here in the center, which tells us that it's it's, it's muddy, it's dirty, it's, it's a lot of mid-tones, there's not a lot of shadows, there's not a lot of highlights, it's just a lot of mid-tone. So the very first thing I can do is I can drag my dark tones toward the center and I can drag my light tones toward the center so now everything is within the confines of my shadows and my highlights i could certainly move my midtones if i want my midtones to be a little more centered based on the current settings of this histogram i could move this to the left if i move it to the right things are going to start to look darker so i might go with something right about here we're going to be adding some color to this so in adding color i i might want things to have some lightness to them so that that color will stand out a little more All right so that doing levels was a quick and easy way to um, fix this photo but there are other things that you can always try in the levels you'll also notice that we always have these little eyedroppers here so I have a shadow eyedropper, a mid-tone eyedropper, and a highlight um, eyedropper. If I were to click on the shadow and basically go to the very darkest thing, take this eyedropper and go to what I believe is the darkest element of this picture. Um, and let's see where that could be. There are some dark places, but I'm not seeing any true black. That seems like it could be a true black. When I do that, it alters my darkest tones. When I go to the highlight and I seek out the whitest of the white, well, to be honest with you, it's this part that's torn, okay? That makes a huge change. That's not a change that I want to keep, okay? So basically what I need to say to this is, no, that it, it can't be that white. I can't have my white my um, lightest tone be that extremely white or I won't have um, I won't have good contrast uh, with this so I've made changes I can go back to my original setting which was like right about here um, or I can leave it with the extreme lights so maybe I will leave the extreme lights because like I said I'm adding color to this so I want I want a lot of light tones so that that color has um, a softer base to apply itself to. So now I'm going to click OK. Now I still have my crops tool on. I don't want that on. So that's why I just click the move tool to get rid of that. All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to fix some of the torn areas of this picture. That's a pretty important thing to do. And so there are tools uh, in here that allow me to fix things. Spot healing brush tool, healing brush tool, patch tool, content aware move tool. I'm going to show you a variety of things, but we're going to start with the content aware move tool. And to do that, I am going to start with my lasso. I'm going to find a location such as this where I need to fill that in. And I don't necessarily want to paint it with a paintbrush or try to duplicate it myself, I want the program to sort of determine for me what should be there. So I just took my lasso tool and I went right around that little white section that had nothing in it. Now I'm going to go to image and I'm going to go to um, 
Oops. Okay, am I going to the right place? Um, I'm sorry. I'm going to go to edit, and then I'm going to, going to go to fill. Forgive me. I'm going to go to edit. I'm going to go to fill. And now you see one of my options is content aware. And basically that simply means that Photoshop is has familiarized itself with the pixels that are surrounding this location and so it is going to put in what it thinks is going to fill this out correctly so when i hit okay you see it just filled in okay um, i'm gonna hit Control d which means deselect and so you can see that now it's sort of filled in with what it thinks might work in that location Okay, so I don't have that big white spot anymore. Now, if I zoom in, and if you want to zoom in easily, hit Control Plus. Uh, and I think it works on remote PC, but again, I'm not positive. That's why sometimes I just tell you guys to go to View, go to Zoom In, go to Zoom, zoom Out, go to Fit on Screen. Um, you know, when we're back in school and you have the luxury of working directly on a computer this will be a lot easier but in the meantime just go to view if you can't zoom in um, using using um, control plus all right so I have scratches and things that I want to take care of those are not necessarily things that I would use content aware on I might use content aware on some of these locations so I think I'll continue using content aware just for a few more steps just to get comfortable with it okay so again I've made this little shape using my lasso tool okay again I'm going to go to edit and I know I kind of confused you a minute ago um, I'm going to go to fill and then you see content aware and then color adaptation is is typically always checked we want the opacity to be 100 percent because we're working with a um, just a normal opaque photo so there's no reason that we would need an opacity so when I do that it fills it in with what it believes should be in that location and again I can hit control D which means deselect or I can go up here and click deselect um, usually you can hit your your um, return key um, mine doesn't seem to work with remote PC but if yours does then you can do that to to deselect I have this tiny little thing right here you know I could try to get rid of it using uh, content aware or I could skip it this for sure I will get rid of using content aware so what I will do is just sort of again take this whole section go around until I create a complete shape once I have a complete shape once again edit fill content aware and you, you might see if there's something else showing foreground color background color color you know if one of these is showing make sure you click on the menu to get content aware content aware came up for me automatically most likely because I had been using it but um you might not see it when you first open up. You might see foreground color. Well, if you see foreground color, go down to content aware and then hit OK. OK. And so now that little piece is gone. I'm going to hit Control D for deselect. Um, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Again, I can zoom out by hitting uh, Control minus. Um, but if that does not work for you, go to view zoom out okay so now I can see the whole picture we still have scratches on the picture and the easiest way to get rid of those is probably not going to be using content aware they're a little too fine for that so next I will go to my spot healing brush tool okay and with this you're using a brush my brush is currently set on 30 um, the hardness is 100%, spacing is 25. It's set on normal, and um, I should be able to just run 
my brush over that, it'll make a bla black line at first, but then what, what it will do is pick up the pixels that are under it and it'll change it. Now I will tell you there are a lot of scratches on this photo and the only way you're going to see them completely is if you really zoom in and just make your way around. Like I can see there's a tiny dot right there that I can get rid of just by clicking on it. I can get rid of that tiny dot. This whole area, if I drag, I can clean that up. If you see that there's some texture behind it and you want to make sure it's going in the right direction, like you can see that there looks like there's some bars back there, it might be a good idea to move your brush in the correct direction so that it picks up the colors that it starts with, with whatever its source is. Here I can go up, here I can go up, um, here I can go up. And there's that tiny little white spot there that doesn't seem to want to um, doesn't seem to want to go away. We'll try one more time, and if not, we'll try a different tool. There. Now it seems to be going away. Maybe a smaller brush was what I needed. Okay, so um, I'm gonna just scroll around my picture here. Clearly, you know, there's a tiny little dot there. There's a tiny little dot there. Tiny little dot there. Um, I'll scroll over. Now, when I get up to this corner, there are definitely some issues. And I do see that I probably need to crop my photo a little bit better because I didn't crop it very well. Um, I can do this one of two ways. I can try to just continue to use my healing brush tool okay the other possibility was that i could have used the content aware tool okay and see and see if it picked up what i needed it to pick up okay so again i'm just sort of using this top tool here spot healing brush tool and i'm dragging and if there's something I don't even like, like that little dot, that's probably just an imperfection in the brick, but I can get rid of it anyway. Uh, I'm going to scroll out a little bit so I get a better view. Um, I have this large scratch here. So I'm gonna zoom into that a little bit. Um, I'll use, I'll continue to use the same tool, okay? I'm using the spot healing brush tool Okay, I can either just drag over it. Okay, now it, um, it's starting to eliminate the white. You have to make sure you start where the color is correct. If you start someplace, if you start on white, if I start directly on the scratch, then it won't know what I'm trying to do. So again, I can just kind of keep scrolling over these things. I see a little mark there that I want to get rid of. There seems to be a bit of a scratch here too. Okay, so this is a really handy tool. You can use this on faces. You can use this um, we're going to be doing a project where you're going to be uh, blending at least two animals together. There are ways that you can blend to make things seem almost seamless. And so um, these are tools that you can do to make things seem seamless. These are also tools you can use to eliminate things altogether. So I'm going to zoom out again. I still have some issues at the bottom that I would like to correct. So um, let me zoom in again and go down to the bottom here. So again, a couple of ways I can do this. I can 
just go over this with my healing brush tool and it sort of gets rid of that for me. Seems like there might be a little line there. Looks like there's some little imperfections. Some imperfections could simply be the fact that she's standing on concrete. So it's hard to say for sure if some of these things are imperfections or if they're uh, things that are um, like damage to the photograph. But this for sure would be a problem with the photograph. You can clearly tell that that's a scratch. So we definitely want to get rid of this. Now I'm going to do one more thing. I want to get rid of that shadow. It looks like somebody who took this picture, there, they were right in the picture, like their shadow is right there. And I don't want to see that person's shadow in this picture. So once I feel pretty good about getting rid of all the little scratches and things that indicate this is an old picture, I want to get rid of that shadow. So here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to go back to this section of tools. We've got the spot healing brush tool, the healing brush tool. We have something called a patch tool, okay? And each of these does different things. So if I say did the um, healing brush tool, it would make like little circles of things. Like I would be able to kind of carry over whatever you know, whatever I pick up, I could put it over like that. And that could be interesting, but it gives it a texture that I'm not really looking to have. It doesn't look accurate. So I probably won't want to keep that. So let me um, pull up my, pull up my histogram. Not my histogram, excuse me, my history. history panel and I'm going to go back because those changes are not how I want to get rid of that shadow but you can see what happened if I was if I was doing a painting right now that could be a very cool tool to use and we will be painting very soon um, and so you might find this to be a cool tool to use this healing brush because you'll be able to repeat things um, but that's not how I want to get rid of this shadow. So that's not going to be my choice, okay? My other choice is a um, patch tool, okay? And with the patch tool, um, I would hit my option key. Oops, uh, actually what I would do is I would draw something once I draw that something, you see it says source. I then click destination. And if I moved it, then it would sort of begin to blend with whatever I have there. And then I would have to repeat that. And I would repeat that. And um, eventually I would get this covered. But you can see there's a blending taking place. And so there's still a darkness to this that is not going to be the best idea for getting rid of um, getting rid of that shadow. So um, again, I'm going to hit deselect, and we're going to move on to our next tool. We've already done content aware, okay? So we've used all of these tools. Now what we want to do is we want to try our clone stamp tool, okay? And your clone stamp tool you're going to find to be a pretty interesting tool. Now, it's always set to the size of a brush. So when you click on clone stamp, all of a sudden you're going to see your brushes up here. And you're going to see them in terms of what brush you want to use. You can do this with any brush you want. Um, soft round is typically not a bad brush to use. Uh, in addition to using soft round, you would probably want to um, you would probably want to increase the size maybe a little bit because this is a pretty large area and 
if you want to see, you can see my circle down there. If you want to be able to see the size of your brush, the easiest way to do that is to just click the right bracket Oops. Um, on your keyboard. Whoops, it's not supposed to be showing up there. Okay, so make sure it's clone stamp. There we go. Okay, so now it's set at 5,000. Not, let's, let's go back a second. Try this again. Okay, I've got the clone stamp tool. Don't need it to be set at 5,000. Okay, let's try 75. Okay, now again, the bracket tool is supposed to not show up in your size. Let's just close it down for a second. Maybe that'll help if I have that closed. Now, if I'm just sitting here and I click my bracket, okay, now you can see that it's getting bigger and it's getting bigger. Okay, now I, you can see there's a foot there. That was not an intentional thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find a location where I am happy with what I see and I'm going to hmm, seems to be playing little games right now I'm going to hit the option key okay and then what should happen is if this is the area I select okay if I hit the option key and then left click my mouse I should be able to just carry it over here and it should put the same item right there. And if I want to pick up again, option, left click, and then if I carry it over here, you can see it's sort of filling in this space. Now, I could just keep clicking, um, but eventually it might start picking up other things. So I'm going to go back to my starting point, which was here, left uh, option key, left click, carry it over, okay, option key, left click, carry it over, option key, left click, carry it over, option key, left click, carry it over. If you see things like I keep seeing, like the foot showing up, it's, it's detecting things and that's why it's putting it there. The, um, it, you, it, it goes away, but it, it can be confusing when you see that happening. But once you click option and then left click, you should be able to eliminate that. Now, there's a bit of a pattern here that I don't necessarily like. So what I might do is click here and carry this down just to break this up because I don't, I don't want to create a pattern with how I've put these things. And if you see, there's like little lines here and I don't necessarily want those little lines. So I'll go to different locations and just sort of pick up a sample and carry it somewhere else. And hopefully that breaks up any pattern that I created in trying to cover up that section. Um, like here again there's a there's a bit of a pattern there I don't like that pattern so again break up the pattern a little bit um, and just sort of add some variety to things too can be kind of nice um, not sure that was the best this seems like a good location there we go. All right, I'm going to leave it at this. Is it perfect? It's not necessarily perfect, but my goal is to, to teach you how these tools work. So um, you, pla you practice with it, you see what, what you get. Okay, so I want to get out of the clone stamp tool. 
you should be able to hit your enter key and it should help you get out of it. You might be able to click control D for deselect. You can click your move tool and that should take you out of it. Um, in any case, you want to get out of that clone tool because you don't want any more cloning to be going on. All right, so now I'm going to kind of bring her down to size. Uh, like I said, the only thing I still need to do with her is I need to work on that tiny little section at the top where I didn't crop it enough. So I'm just going to bring it down slightly. That's a little more than I need. If I zoom out, zooming out tends to give you more to work with. So if I zoom out and then try to bring this down a little bit, I should have more control. And in doing this, I've just discovered that I'm not completely done with removing the scratches. There's a nice little scratch right there. I'm going to click the check that I definitely want to get rid of. So I'm going to go back to the spot healing brush tool and it's set at 21 and that's a good that's a good measurement and I'm just gonna see what I can do to get rid of that get rid of that uh, let me zoom out a little bit see if there's anything else about this picture that is not going to work no she looks a lot better and so now I'm going to hit save okay um, and the next thing I'm gonna do there's this one last thing we're gonna do to her to sharpen her up this is a very blurry picture um, it's an old picture so if I go to filter and I go to the word sharpen it's gonna give me this list of options um, one of the options is unsharp mask and strangely unsharp mask actually sharpens things okay and if I have it low um, if I if I have it low it's going to uh, not be as sharp if, if I have it a little bit higher it's going to be sharp I'm going to, to keep it at 100 okay and this is going to sharpen up the edges and what's on the outside and yet keep her soft. So we just want to sharpen up sort of her edges and any of the details. So using the unsharp mask is going to let me do that. So the radius is set at 2, the threshold is set at 5, and I'm going to click OK. And that should put her in a very crisp, clean um, layout. So if I decided to, photo to uh, print this, I'd have no trouble. So I'm going to hit Save. Right, now the, the next thing is adding color. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll stop this video here and then I'm going to do a second video where we're gonna take this image and we're gonna add color to her. Okay, so I'll see you in the next video.